computing and terminating decimals. So we're going to actually be talking about their interaction with fractions a lot. So in person, I like to do this as a nice uh, discovery kind of lesson, but uh, online, I'm just going to kind of summarize what might have happened if we had done some exploration. If you'd like to, um, you could go ahead and look at some of these uh, fractions and try to determine uh, which ones are going to repeat or terminate uh, on your own, or make up any other fraction and see if you can predict if it's going to repeat or terminate uh, before actually calculating its uh, decimal equivalent. Okay, so what we should keep in mind here is that we are converting from fractions to decimals, and certainly we can do this by like long division or picking up a calculator and determine if it's going to repeat or terminate, but we want to be able to do this from just a quick glance, looking at the fraction and knowing um, if it's going to repeat or terminate. So we've got a list here. One sixth is repeating. It's 0.16 repeating. Um, three tenths, that's going to terminate. That's just 0.3. So that terminates. That means it does not continue on and on. 0.6, the sixes keep going on and on and on and on. Uh, two fifteenths, that repeats. It's 0.1, and then the threes repeat on and on. And we put the bar just above the three to say that that number is repeating, not the one. One ninth is 0.1 repeating. The ones will go on and on forever and ever. Uh, 3 fifteenths terminates. That's exactly 0.2. 1 sixteenth, that also terminates. It's a longer decimal, but after the 5, it ends cleanly. Uh, 8 thirtieths is 0.2, and then the 6 repeats. Enough if you do this in your calculator, you might see that the last digit would be a 7, but uh, that's only because it's rounding up. And then 1 20th terminates. So what is in common about all of these? Well, let's take a deeper look at the denominators. So the six here, the denominator of this first fraction, um, how does it factor? Its prime factorization is two times three. So I went ahead and did the prime factorization for all of the denominators. Here are two times five, here are three times five, three times three. Now, when we get to a situation like three fifteenths, it is actually necessary that we go ahead and simplify three fifteenths into one fifth. Uh, I'll explain why that's important in a second. So what's the prime factorization of 5? It's just 5. All right, 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Um, 8 thirtieths is the same as 4 fifteenths, and that's 3 times 5. 1 twentieth is 2 times 2 times 5. OK, so what we're looking for is a pattern in the repeating versus the terminating. So if I look at this repeating, I see, OK, I see a 3 there. If I see terminating here, I see two and five. Let's go to the next terminating. Okay, the next terminating is just five. The next terminating is a bunch of twos. Uh, the next terminating is two times two times five. Interesting. So if you haven't picked it out already, when we have a terminating uh, decimal, the fraction, its denominator is factored as only twos and fives. Now, some of you might be like, well, what about 3 fifteenths. <laughs> 3 fifteenths, if you had factored the 15 originally, you would have been like, oh, that's 3 times 5. We have to do this once it's in its reduced form. So once we reduced it, the 3 canceled out with the numerator and left only a 5 in the denominator. So let's write out this out as a rule. The rule we can say is a fraction will be a terminating decimal if and only if its denominator is made up of only factors of 2 and 5. And we should say this is when simplified. So, so what do I mean by this? So we could look at a number like uh, 2 over 25. 25 is 5 times 5, so I know that's going to terminate. We can look like at a number like 1 over 32. 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Only 2s and 5s, so that terminates. We can have a combination. We can have 1 over, or even like 7 over, 40. 40 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. So that terminates. On the other side, if we had uh, 1 over 18, 18 is 2 times 3 times 3. 
So that is going to repeat. Yes, it has a factor of two, but as soon as there's a factor of anything else other than two or five, it's going to repeat. So if we have one over 14, 14 is two times seven. The two is fine, the seven means that it's going to repeat. If we have um, one over 27, that's three times three times three. So that's going to repeat. So if there's any factor other than two or five as the factor of the denominator, when it's simplified, it's going to repeat. So that takes out of uh, the equation something like if I had seven over 14. Well, you're like, oh, the denominator has factors other than two or seven, but we can simplify this. So seven over 14, of course, is one over two. And now the denominator's only factor is two, so that terminates. So this is how to quickly tell if a fraction will turn into a terminating or repeating decimal. <laughs>